All right, so we're going to continue with what we did yesterday. All right, so we're going to start off with an example from what we were working on together. Uh, yesterday, we, were, we made a graph based off of uh, details that they gave us about the graph. So here we have an amusement park, okay? The number of people in line for a roller coaster throughout the day can be modeled by a function. Okay. Use key features to sketch a graph of the function, then interpret the key features if X represents the time and hours since the ride opened at 10 a.m. Um, and Y represents the number of people in line, okay? So we have some features going on. We are positive in between our x values of negative 0.5 and x equals 12. So remember, positive versus negative means above or below the x-axis, right? So when they tell me where something's positive or negative, they're giving us x-intercepts. So I know negative 0.5 about right here and 12, 10, 11, 12. Those are going to be x-intercepts, uh, right? Between those two points, I'm going to be above it. And then on the outside of those two points, I'm going to be below it, which is what the negative part says. So less than negative 0.5, I'm under. Greater than 12, I'm also under. So the two ends are going down, right? But in the middle, we're going to be above. All right, we are increasing for when x is less than 1.4 and in between x is 5.3 and 9.9. .9. So here, they're telling us where, um, where we're increasing and then right below, it tells me where I'm decreasing, okay? They're giving us where turns are happening, okay? So I don't know exactly where they're, they're going on. They just gave me X values. They didn't give me Y values. So what we're going to do is 1.4. So that's about here. So some turn is going to happen there, okay? 5.3 is about right here. And then 9.9 .9 is about right here. Ooh, those are not. Okay. All right. So we know our, our waves are happening. Our turns are happening in between these X values. Okay. It's increasing first. See where it says X is less than 1.4. So we're going to increase first. Then we're going to decrease in between the 1.4 and 5.3. Then we're going to increase again, it says, between 5.3 and 9.9. .9. And then after 9.9, .9, it's going to fall down again. So I can kind of like mentally picture what the shape is going to be, okay? The issue is I don't know where to put my points. I don't know how, how many people were in line yet, okay? But we know something's happening at those marks, okay? Um, intercepts. They give me the x-intercepts, which we already had, right? But we don't have the y-intercept. So y-axis at 220. So these are counting by, what, 50s, I think? Mm -hmm. So I would say right here in between. That can be about 220, making our best guess. Um, and then now they finally gave me my turning points. I have a relative minimum and two relative maximums. So relative minimum is going to be the bottom of a dip. So 5.3, which I've already marked, it's here in the middle, and 133. So now I can know I can put it, my turning point at about right here. Because again, my Y's count by 50s. So that's in between 100 and 150, our best guess. That, that's going to be a dip. Um, two maximums, so at 1.4, that's that first order line that we did, we can mark it with the Y value of 448. So almost at that line, really close to it. And then at 9.9, .9, that last started line, we're going to do a point at 643. So 600, 650, so a little bit below. Oh, what am I doing? That's not even on the dot. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to do math. Okay. So now I have points and now I can connect the points. What's up? Hold on. Okay. So now we're connecting the points. So we're starting here. We're going up. Connect. That's a turn. That's a turn. There's a turn. And then we're cutting through our exit of that. What's up? Which ones? Which ones? So these, this right here, 
told me where to put the line, put the dots on my dotted lines. So at the dotted line of 5.3, I put the point at 133. Does that make sense? This was the 5.3 right here. And then at my dotted line of 1.4, which we marked right here, I put the dot at 448 for my Y. And then this one right here is my 9.9, .9, and that's where we got our 643. Okay. And then we connect. Turn, turn, turn. And there we go. And isn't that kind of what I drew on the side? See how we kind of expected it to look this shape? So we were correct. We just didn't know exactly where our maxes and mins were. Um, in behavior, as X increases or decreases, so the left side and the right side, my Y values are decreasing. So yes, both sides are going down. That is correct. We're good. Okay. So that's what we did yesterday. Okay. The bottom half of this is what's kind of what's being introduced to you today. So now we need to interpret what we did and talk about the people in line for the roller coaster and how long they've been standing there, that whole thing. So we're going to make our numbers make sense. Okay. So the X intercepts mean that the number of people in line is zero, <clears throat> um, a half hour before the ride opened, and when else? There was nobody in line half an hour before, and what? And 12 hours afterwards. Good, those were your x-intercepts. So that shows when there was nobody in line. The half an hour before it opened, and then 12 hours after it opened, there was nobody in line. The y-intercept means that how many people were in line when it opened? What was my y-intercept? What did it tell me? 220. So there were 220 people in line when the ride opened. Any questions on where we got those values? Yeah. 12. The 12 was my other x-intercept. So when I got that from negative half and 12, and then it also told me in our intercepts right here, our x-intercepts, negative 0.5 and 12. So negative 0.5 and 12 was the hours, the zero was the people. And then our y-intercept, the zero is the hours, the 220 is the people. All right, we good? Any other questions? Let me make this orange so it matches. Okay. Here we go, next, next little sentence here. The ride experienced a relative low in the number of people in line how many hours after it opened? So where was my dip in people that were in line? Yeah, yeah, we're looking at this point and what, yeah, that's the dip. What's the time? 5.3 hours. Yeah, 5.3 hours after it opened. <clears throat> and where were the two peaks? The peaks of when we had the most people. There you go. Good at 1.4 and at 9.9 .9 hours. That showed the maximum number of people that were in line. Good. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not done. Okay. The number of people in line was negative but increasing until about half an hour before the ride opened. Okay, It was positive and increasing from half an hour before until uh, before the ride opened until blank hours after it opened. That was very wordy for when did I, I was increasing up until when? What was it? Try again. Yeah, when did it stop increasing? The 1.4. Okay, so that's our 1.4. I know. Okay. And again, from blank to blank. So where was my next interval of increase? Where did I go up again? Because after this, I went down. So where did I start going up again? 
between 5.3 and 9.9. So 5.3 and 9.9. .9. So we show, we showed the two intervals of increase. Okay. Now it's going to ask me um, for the decreasing intervals. Okay. So my first interval of decrease. I'm changing my colors again. We're decreasing. After the right had been open for how many hours? When when did it start to fall down? 1.4. 1. 1. Up until? 1. 4. To what? 1. To 5.3. 1.4 .4 to 5.3. Oh, come on, Pen. Oh, yep. Yeah, thank you. Come on. There we go. It's 1.4 to 5.3. Hold on. I messed something up. Stop. Rewind. Yep. You know why? Because I didn't read. Reading something I need to do. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I know. I need to read. Um, and again, from 5.3 hours after the ride opened until 9.9 .9 hours after it opened. It is negative and decreasing after the ride had opened, had been opened for how many hours? It was negative and decreasing after the ride had been opened for how many hours? So what, um, where's the end? How many hours? What's, what was our total hours? 12. 12. That was my fault. <laughs> okay, so now we are positive, so that means we're, my Y's are positive, but we're decreasing, so this is what we're just trying to talk about. I have my numbers in the wrong boxes. This is where we put from 1.4 to 5.3. That was the first interval of decrease when we were in the positive. Okay. And then we decrease again. Where? 9.9 .9 to what? 12. To 12. Okay. So those were um, the people in line. The numbers were going down. I'm going to help you. The last box is 12. Yep. Good. The graph indicates a period where there is a negative number of people in line. Because it's not possible to have a negative number of people, this graph appears to only model the number of people in line for the ride from half an hour before the ride opened until... 12 hours after it opened. So, yes. So, we can't really use these negative Y values. That, that does not make sense. We're not going to have negative people in line, right? Stop. Please stop. Right. Okay. Okay. Do we understand why, why the negative Ys don't make sense? Okay. So, the function models a trend that, that they saw, but the numbers that make sense only stay in the positives. Okay. Yes, no, maybe. We can be iffy. We're allowed to be iffy. Like, how do you feel? It can. It can get confusing. So I'm trying to try and take it one step at a time. All right. Marine life. Chase. Chase, thank you. The path of a dolphin jumping out of the ocean can be modeled with a symmetric function. Okay, which graph could be used to show the height of the dolphin above the water, uh, y, as a function of time since it emerged from the water, x? Okay, so let's think about this. If I were to draw a dolphin jumping out of the water, here's water, right? What would that look like? Use your hand. What would what would it look like if a dolphin jumped out of the water? <laughs> yes. Okay. 
Our dolphin would jump out of the water, and then he'd come back in the water, right? Yes? Does that make sense? <laughs> there you go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the dolphin would jump out. So, does make your math make sense, right, Tram? Right, Jay? Put it away, please. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you. Okay. So, what do you think the O should represent in, your, in my graph, my X or my Y axis? This is my X. Yeah. The water is the X. Okay. Remember, this is time. Oh, my gosh. I'm a big I don't know. There we go. Time. Okay. And then my y axis over here is going to be um, the height. Okay. These are your y's. Yes, there's a big space right there for you to draw. Yes, this is the height. Okay. Guys, guys, it's not as hard as you think it is. Does that not show a path of a dolphin jumping out of water? Yes, all we got to do is label some things. Okay, we got the shape, let's label some stuff. Okay, it is positive between zero and eight seconds. So from the problem we just did, when it told me the positive numbers, which intercepts did that give me, Chase? It gave me my x-intercepts, thank you. So that means zero and eight are x-intercepts. I'm happy you did. Zero and eight. So how long was the dolphin in the air for? Eight for eight seconds, right? All right. Um, and we're negative for time less than zero and greater than eight. That makes sense. On the ends, the dolphin is underwater. He hasn't. He either hasn't jumped yet or he already jumped. Okay. Um, we are decreasing for time greater than four seconds. So what did that just give me? What is four? Yeah, it gave me four. Is four a time or a height? Four is a time. Yeah, that, that's showing us where it's symmetrical. So that's showing where the dolphin reaches its maximum height. Okay, relative maximum is at four seconds. Did it give me a height? Yeah. It doesn't tell me how, how high the dolphin got in the air. We don't know how tall he got, but we do know it took four seconds to reach the maximum height and then four seconds again to get back under the water. Okay. In behavior, as X increases and decreases, the Y values are decreasing. Are both ends going down? Yes. Okay. Symmetry, the right half, and uh, is the mirror image of the left half at approximately x point x equals four? We have that graphed, right? Okay. So was drawing the graph really that bad? No, that makes sense. Okay. Now there's two things I want you to represent or um, interpret for me. Actually, negative x values. What do negative x values represent for our dolphin? Okay. Well, let's think about it. Negative x's are over here, right? Where is my dolphin with negative x's? Is he underwater or above water? He's still underwater. Okay? So negative x values represent, I know that that box is very small, so I'm going to do a little arrow. Okay? It is when the dolphin is underwater. Dolphin. Um, really, he's getting ready to jump, right? He's on his way to jump out of the water. So dolphin. Um, you want to say on its way to jump? Sounds good. On its way to jump out of water. Okay, so my negative x values show time before the dolphin jumped. So he's on his way to jump out of the water. All right, and what do y values represent if my y's are negative? What does negative y value? So that's down here. Negative y's. So that shows the dolphin is where? Under the water. Yeah. So dolphin is underwater. All right, you could say it's before and after the jump. 
if you wanted to, that's another correct interpretation. Okay. Um, you can say the dolphin's underwater. It it all it all fits to what's happening with our dolphin. Okay. Did that make more sense than the first one? The first one had a lot. So this one didn't have as much, but did the interpreting make more sense about underwater, above water? Okay. Our last two are multiple choice. Okay. They very much go with what we did yesterday. We're fighting, finding the graphs that match. Okay. And there is only one answer for each one of these. Okay. Is anyone still writing down anything with the dolphin before I continue? Okay, here we go. Voting. The number of people waiting in line to vote at a polling center can be approximated by a function. Sketch a graph that shows the number of people waiting in line Y as a function of the time since opening X in hours. Okay. So, no, we're going to pick which one is right. Yeah, we're going to pick which one is sketched correctly. Okay. So, first off, it is positive for a time greater than zero. So, can my graph ever go below the x-axis? No. No. Are any of my graphs doing that? No. No. All right. None of our graphs are going underneath the x-axis. So, so far, I can't cross any of them out. All right. Um, our next detail. We are increasing... From zero to two hours, no. and then after seven and a half hours. So let's look at the zero to two first. No. Okay, hold on, stay with me. So from zero to two, we should be increasing. Are we increasing between that section? No. No, so guess what? That one's out. Okay. Are we increasing between zero and two? Yes. That one? Yes. Okay. How about this one? Uh, yeah. Zero and two. We are Jalen, all right, am I increasing between zero and two on that third one? No. Technically, we're going up. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that one's fine. And my last one, there is zero, there is two. Are we increasing? Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, okay, so that's fine. Um, it's also increasing after seven and a half hours. Okay, we already took that one out. Um, after seven and a half, so after seven and a half, are we going up for this one? No. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, Why? Is, is it going down? Yeah. So it's not going it, I would say it's increasing. Mm -hmm. it look, it's going down. I mean, it's iffy, but it's definitely not going down. It has like a little dip kind of going on. It's, yeah, it's questionable. Let's not cross it out yet. Okay. Seven and a half. Are we increasing after this seven and a half? Again, kind of questionable, but I don't feel confident to cross it out yet. Um, are we increasing after seven and a half? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So like so far, I like D, but let's just, we can't, listen, we can't confidently cross out the other ones yet. Okay. So don't assume, make sure you know for a fact. All right. Decreasing from two to seven and a half. So are we going down between those? It looks like that they, they are all falling down in between. So we're still not there yet. Um, intercepts. The graph intercepts the y-axis at 9.75. Let's mark this as blue. All right, does this have a y-intercept of 9.75? No. No, all right, so good. Now I can confidently say that's not going to be it. Hold on, hold on. Does this have a y-intercept of about 9.75? Yes? Stop just saying no because you want to say no. Okay, that could be about 9.75. It could be close. Yes, I would say these both have a y intercept of about 9.75. Okay, but we don't know that confident. We don't know that for a fact. You're just guessing. Stop. Chase, not talking to you. Don't be part of the problem. You're going to make it. Relative minimum at 7.5 comma 1. So that's going to be a dip. At 7.51. So let's look right here. Is this 7.51 right here? Yeah. That green dot is at 7.51. No. Is this green dot at 7.51? You're not going to touch anything. Nothing's getting handed back. They're going to stay right where they are. This is, this is, do we confidently say that's a minimum of 7.5 and 1? Yes. So now we can confidently say 
that that is going to be the answer, the, uh, the model that shows the voting. Okay. All right, so sometimes facts help us cross things out. Sometimes facts don't. So we have to make sure we go through all of them until you can confidently, confidently eliminate it, everything but our answer. All right, we have one more. We have one more. Okay, last one. Here we go. Use the key features to identify which graph shows y as a function of x. All right, so we have four different graphs. B is weird. Let's see what's going on. All right, we are positive between negative 1.1 and negative 0.4, and then again after 1.7. So we're above the x-axis between two numbers. So there's like a bump above, and then there's a piece on the end. Does that make sense? So there's a bump in between two values, and then we're going up again. Is that happening on A? Yes. Yes. Is that happening on B? Yes. No, Are they even connected? No. And that's, 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 yeah, it's discrete. It's not a function, okay? Um, is that happening for C? Yep. Is it happening for D? No. So that first one, we've already crossed out two of my choices, okay? Now, work smarter, not harder. Look at these choices. Look at what, what you have. Do you see a difference between A and C? What is the only difference between those two graphs? C has arrows, A does not. So which one do you think arrows matter? No. Yes. Okay, especially when it says it's, it's a function and we're not being related to a real world context, nothing's stopping it, okay? So do I have to check anything else? No. No, what can I go ahead and say the answer is? It is C, okay? And it is because of those arrows. It is showing that it's continuous in both directions. Right. 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 